Blessed are you, holy and living one. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we'll have the lighting of the Advent wreath. Melanie and Trish, yes. Sunday we lit the candle of joy. We light it and the candles of hope and peace again as we remember God came down from heaven to be close to us. We thank God for the hope we are given, for the peace God bestows, and for the joy God pours into our hearts. The fourth candle of Advent is the candle of love. God's love is perfect. It holds nothing back. God's love gives us everything we need, redeems us, and shows us the way, of, the way to live a life of hope and peace and joy. We light the candle of love to remind us that Jesus brings us God's love and shows us how to love others. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for loving us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your love with others. We ask this in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem, Christ the Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. Our first reading is from the book of Micah. You, O Bethlehem of Ephra, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one day who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord. Our response today is Psalm 80. Let's read it responsibly by whole verse. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the seraphim. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Oh, 
You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Our second reading is a lesson from the letter to the Hebrews. When Jesus came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me in burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See, God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. And then he added, see, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offerings of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. The word, the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is, on those, is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants, forever. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Please be seated. A teenaged girl arrives in a small town near Jerusalem after a three-day trip by caravan. It's very unusual that she's traveling alone without a male member of her family to protect her. 
and her fellow travelers think it's strange, but she offers them no explanation. In fact, she barely speaks during the trip. Walking to the house of her much older cousin, Elizabeth, Miriam desperately hopes that her story will be believed. Life has been tough in her small hometown. After her story about seeing and speaking to a heavenly messenger got around. Friends and neighbors wonder if she's possessed by a demon and they whisper about it and the whispers follow her everywhere. But they still don't know the worst part, the most scandalous part of the story. Miriam is pregnant and her fiance has told her parents that the baby isn't his. Not even her parents believe her explanation. And so afraid of what might happen to her when the story gets around, the full story gets around, and in such a small town it will, she cannot leave fast enough. The angel told her that Elizabeth was pregnant, even though she's too old for it to be possible. And Miriam decides her only hope is to get to Elizabeth as soon as possible, the only person who has a chance of understanding what has happened. As the house comes into view, Miriam feels afraid. What if Zechariah, Elizabeth's husband, won't believe her and throws her out of the house? What will she do then? But as soon as Elizabeth sees her, Miriam's fears fly away like a flock of startled birds. Elizabeth smiles, holds her arms out to her, and calls out a greeting that tells Miriam that somehow Elizabeth knows. Miriam flies into Elizabeth's arms, and both women burst into tears of joy. Their embrace is so tight that Miriam feels Elizabeth's baby move. And Elizabeth says that her son is dancing with joy. Miriam begins singing, the words and melody spilling out of her as she praises God and utters a prophecy about what the birth of her son will mean for the world. This scene, described in today's gospel, vibrates with emotion, vibrates with joy, and vibrates with power. It's a moment that only the two women can fully understand. But as joyful as the moment is, I have to imagine that both women were also afraid for themselves and for their sons. Both faced censure and ostracism. Mary has the worst of it. She faces death by stoning. And who knows what their sons will face? The empire, the powers that be, are not kind to those wishing for a just and peaceful world. But the two women know what they know they have heard what they have heard, and they will not be silent in the face of the dangers. And what do they know? They know that this is an occasion for joy because they know that a new day is dawning, a new day of justice and peace, a, a day when the fulfillment of God's promises to Israel is at hand. During the last eight years of my ministry in Roman Catholic parishes, a big shift took place. Our progressive bishop retired as he had reached retirement age, and he was replaced first by one and then by another conservative bishop. 
And the second bishop was much more conservative than the first. And everything changed. <clears throat> and it was a definite shock to the system. Progressive ideas, which had been fine to talk about before, were now met with disapproval. My lay colleagues and I found that we had to be very careful about what we said in public. Ultra-conservative groups joined progressive parishes, mine was one of them, for the sole purpose of clandestinely recording what was said in adult gatherings, in adult faith formation series and workshops and retreats. And the highlights were sent to the bishop. Also, nasty letters to the editor began to appear in our diocesan publication. Names were named. Pamphlets were put on the windshield of cars during Sunday Mass, warning parishioners about the vipers in their midst. Since most of us were women, our gender was repeatedly brought up in these condemnations that somehow our gender had something to do with a desire to lead people astray. As a result, <laughs> I became very careful about what I said during Bible studies in, and the like, and very adept at sort of coming at things slant, at saying something without really saying it. So, I could pres preserving for myself plausible deniability. It was an effective coping strategy temporarily, but not in the long run. You know, I felt I, I was being I was being dishonest. I wasn't talking about what I truly believed, and I hated it. It's well known that acting in ways that contradict values is corrosive to our very being. It divides us in two, because we, and we are not whole. We are literally disintegrated, and it's painful. You know, we present, a, there's a public face, and then there's who we really are. It's painful emotionally, spiritually, and even physically. We see it in military veterans with PTSD. Their physical health is damaged along with their mental health because they have seen and possibly done things that are contrary to their morality. In some way or another, we all know that feeling, don't we? That uncomfortable, squirmy, anxious feeling when our behavior contradicts our values. It can be a heavy, constricting feeling in our bodies that expresses guilt or shame or anxiety. And it's a feeling that is so unpleasant, we don't want to have it. And so we want to get away from it, from the situation, we want to put it behind us and not think about it again. Now, as unpleasant as it feels, there are powerful forces at work that push us into saying and doing things that do not reflect what we truly are, who we truly are, and what we truly believe. We fear what others might think of us. We fear ostracism. We fear being shunned. We fear retaliation of some kind of being harassed or otherwise forced out, forced out of a job or a position of authority that will leave us unable to continue doing something very meaningful to us. Mary and Elizabeth knew that fear because both of them had questionable pregnancies. As I've said, Mary faced more dangers by far but Elizabeth must have faced some malicious gossip as well. After all, how was it that after so many childish, childless years, she is suddenly pregnant? Maybe the problem wasn't hers, but Zechariah's. 
And yet, despite all of this, their meeting overflows with joy. They're joyful because they are in perfect harmony with God. They are cooperating fully with God's dream for humanity. They are fully themselves, fulfilling their purpose in the world, and that fills them with joy. They are being true to themselves and true to their God. There's no greater joy than being exactly who God intends for us to be, which is the best version of ourselves. Mary sings of this joy, and she will not be silenced. The song of Mary, traditionally known as the Magnificat, just flows out of her like a fountain reaching to the sky. It is a song of praise, a song of the reversals that show the wisdom of the world to be nothing more than lies. The fulfillment of God's promise is at hand. The Messiah, the one who will pave the way and the one who will pave the way for him are coming and they're coming soon. And so the joy the two women share is so much more powerful than their fears. God empowered them to witness to God's saving actions in the world. And Mary and Elizabeth will continue in faithfulness to that witness to the end of their days. In the past three Sundays of Advent, we've heard a lot about John the Baptist. But today, this Sunday, is all about the women. The women who, as much as anyone, were vital to the coming of the Messiah. Like Hannah in the first book of Samuel, Mary sings of the reversals God has worked in the world, the greatest being the pro her, her and her proclamation of the good news. She, a pregnant and unmarried teenager, that by itself is a reversal. It's so much in contradiction to what the religious institutions of her time expect and would say about a woman like her that it seems completely delusional. As I was pondering this scripture and preparing to write this sermon, I thought of the many unlikely people who have courageously stood up against injustice. Darnella Frazier, a teenager who videoed George Floyd's murder, even though she was repeatedly told to stop what she was doing. Malayla Yousafzai, who barely escaped, who barely survived, being shot in the head by the Taliban for standing up for the education of girls. A woman who went on to graduate from Oxford University and who is now a powerful advocate for girls' education, not only in her native Pakistan, but all over the world. And David Hogg, a school shooting survivor who's gone on to advocate for common sense limitations on guns and he does it despite death threats, harassment, and conspiracy theories that say the shootings never happened, and he's just an actor. We too are called to wholeness and joy, the same wholeness and joy that Mary and Elizabeth experienced, through faithfulness to what we believe as Christians. The joy of being true to ourselves and to God, of being exactly who God intends for us to be, of living out our God-given purpose is so much greater than the pain of living a divided life in which we do not act on what we believe. 
our call may be is far less dramatic than what we read in today's gospel but it is a call nonetheless and so may we with the help of god's grace live our moral values in our day-to-day -day life and know the peace of harmony with ourselves and with god and then along with mary we too can say my soul magnifies the lord and my spirit rejoices in god my savior in jesus name we pray Please stand as you are able, and let us profess our faith in the tradition of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. <clears throat> we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Sorry. The mighty one has done great things for us. And also, and so we appeal to God once again, praying, stir up your strength, O Lord, and come to help us. Prepare in us a mansion of yourself, O Christ. Steer up your strength, O Lord. And come. Restore us, O God of hosts. May we know security. May we know peace. May we know the benefits of the reign of your Christ. Steer up your strength, O Lord. And come to help us. Show the strength of your arm, O Lord. Lift up, lift up the lowly. Fill the hungry with good things. 
Look on your children with favor. Stir up your strength, O Lord. And come to help us. Have mercy on all captives and prisoners, O God. Remember them and come to their aid. Fill our hearts with mercy. May we learn to forgive even as you forgive us. Stir up your strength, O Lord. And come to help us. Hear the prayers of your people, O God of hosts. May those who have fed on the bread of tears feed instead on your strength, O Lord. Show them the light of your countenance and be their salvation, especially, and Mar say it with me, Marcus, Marcus Richard, Richard, Bill, Bill Mike, Mike, Peter, Corey, Lou, Lou Leslie, Leslie, the Anderson, the Anderson family, family, Sharon, Aaron, Allie, Allie, Denise, Denise Lindsay, Allison, Allison and Isaac, Isaac the family, family, Joan, Dan, Dan John, John, Linda, Linda Cynthia, Cynthia, Bob, Bob John, Vivian, Vivian, and, and Damon. Damon. Stir up your strength, O Lord. And come to help us. Great Shepherd, gather your flock into your eternal kingdom. Bless the dying, embrace the dead, and comfort those who mourn. Stir up your strength, O Lord. And come to help us. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated for a few announcements. Good morning. Glad to see you here today. Um, as you know, of course, Christmas is on the way. Uh, Christmas will be celebrated, Christmas Eve will be celebrated on Friday evening and uh, Christmas Day will be celebrated on Saturday morning. Um, the Christmas Eve services are in person. Uh, there'll be a family service at 5 p.m. and then the main service at 9 p.m. preceded by about 15 minutes of caroling. And our Christmas Day service will be on Zoom. Um, I also want to point out to you that uh, on December 26th, the first Sunday after Christmas, there will only be one service at 9 a.m. in person here. Um, I want to just underscore the need for reservations. <laughs> um, you know, the, um, the, the, the seating lim limit in this space remains at 45. I was hoping to, we could have a little more, but with the uncertainty about the Omicron variant, that, that is not able to happen. So, but we will be seating overflow in the narthex 
and uh, we're looking at maybe seating people in the uh, in the library, and we're looking at how to uh, show the live stream on the TV in the library. Um, so there will be more seats available than 45, but it is really important that you make a reservation if you are coming. Um, you know, I would feel terrible, and I know our ushers would feel terrible at having to turn anyone away. So please take that to heart. Um, we are asking for, if you would like to donate to Christmas poinsettias, um, you can do that. As I mentioned before the service began, there are envelopes on the table uh, behind, uh, right next to the, um, uh, the uh, baptismal font. Uh, if you write a check, please make a note in the memo line that these are for Christmas flowers and write the names of anyone who you would want to remember on the envelope. <coughs> Um, after this service, we will have the greening of the church. Uh, we will be decorating for uh, Christmas, so everyone is invited to um, join in and, uh, and make, our, make our worship space festive for our Christmas services. Let's see. Oh, uh, our annual meeting, there's a save the date, the date notice for the annual meeting, but it is actually going to be on January 23rd, not the 16th. It says the 16th in here, but the email, the weekly email you receive says the 23rd, and that's what's correct. Um, after uh, the, uh, following the beginning of January, um, our office will be, we will start having full office hours. We'll be open four days a week from 9.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Also, please note that the parish office will be closed from December 24th through Sunday, January 2nd. However, I will be reachable in case of a pastoral emergency by calling my cell phone number. I will be in town. All right. Um, and so uh, we, have, we had our, our vestry meeting a week early uh, because otherwise it would have fallen a little too close to Christmas. So uh, we have vestry member Sharon Armstrong to give us a synopsis of the meeting. Our vestry meet had our last vestry meeting for 21 last Wednesday night. And a few of the highlights uh, we heard from Bill Eldred about our youth group. And they're planning a mission trip in July and a $50 deposit per youth is needed for registration in January. The youth also plans on trying to earn more money by helping to paint the outside of our CLB building in conjunction with St. Andrews, uh, the Brotherhood of St. Andrews. Uh, Reverend Anna also mentioned that the first of the year, the dates are still not concrete that she is going to have a series on what is the Episcopal Church for those of us who would like to have a review and for new members. Um, another exciting thing that's going to be happening in three or four months is an upgrade on our Wi-Fi, which is badly in need. And we have approved Comcast taking over for CenturyLink, but it will take maybe three or four months before that happens. Um, we are looking for more candidates for vestry, which uh, will be announced at the annual meeting on the 23rd. Also, Anna uh, reviewed our bylaws, and it is not, it is acceptable to have two people share our junior warden position. And for those who don't know, our junior warden takes care of the campus, and so that's the church, our CLB building, and the grounds. And we have, I think, close to an acre here. So it's a lot of work, but now we can share it between two people. So if you feel called to do this, please let the office know about it. Um, exciting to tell you also that our final total for the craft fair reached a little, reached very close to 4,200. So we were pretty proud of that. 
and we have designated that funds. We are going to upgrade the electric, the electric system in the CLB building. It's been long overdue for that, and we'd like to know that it's safe for all of our activities in there, and of course, the presence of our youth. Anna mentioned about the Christmas streaming on um, the 26th. And lastly, um, the annual meeting, again, will be on January 23rd, and it, we will only have one service that day, and so it will follow the 9 o'clock service. And that takes care of the highlights. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. I also wanted to um, add uh, to that, to the announcement that um, Right now, our pledge, our pledge, uh, our pledges stand at 90% of what was projected. So that just is a wonderful number, and so I just want to applaud, thank, and applaud everyone who is applaud your generosity very much. So, um, and also I forgot to mention that the uh, Christmas Eve service at 9 p.m. will also be live streamed. All right, so we have uh, some birthdays here. So we have uh, Melanie, please come forward. Um, is there anyone else who has a birthday or an anniversary that is not listed here? You know, happening this week? <coughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> Please join me in praying our birthday prayer, which is on at the bottom, begins at the, the bottom of page eight. <clears throat> Watch over your child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever they may be. Strengthen them where she stands. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise her up when she falls. And in her heart, may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of her life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. <clears throat> and now at this time of offering, bring all that you are and all that you have. Enter God's courts with praise and thanksgiving.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs of him in everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you, in Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with St. Martin and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Everyone is welcome at this holy table.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tom, would you come forward? In the name of God and this congregation, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you do share, you, you share them, may share with us in the communion of Christ. We who are many are one body because we all share in the one bread, one cup. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Jesus Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our recessional hymn is Creator of the Stars of Night, which is on the front, the first page of your worship bulletin. On detour, O Messine Rue, Eternal lux credenti rule. Jesu redemptor omni. Intende voti supplico. Creator of the stars of night. Your people's everlasting light. O oh Christ, Redeemer, save us all. And hear your servants when they call. You came the bridegroom of the bride. As earth drew on to even time. You came to save our fallen race Through your unending love and grace At your great name exalted now All knees in lowly homage bow All things in heaven and earth adore and crown you king forevermore. To God the Father and the Son, and God the Spirit three in one, what honor, might, and glory be, from age to age eternally. Let us bless the Lord. 